Well, it's been almost two years since Windows 11 was released, and I'm sorry to say, it still sucks. So today, I'm gonna go over my latest gripes with Windows 11. Stay tuned. Windows 11 was the operating system that no one asked for, and quite honestly, no one really wants. I, it was thrown onto us completely unexpectedly, and to be perfectly honest with you, I think most people really did take it by surprise. I know I did. I was expecting Windows 10 to be a rolling release that simply lasted forever. I mean, that's what Microsoft said it was going to be, so I just kind of took them for their word. But obviously, that's not going to be the case. And at almost two years, more and more people are adopting Windows 11. So because of that, I'm seeing it a lot more on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know what? I can tell you one thing right now. People are not upgrading to Windows 11. People who have it, they have it because it came on a new computer. And to be perfectly honest with you, not everyone's happy with it. In fact, to be blunt, Windows 11 still sucks. But the worst part is, it doesn't have to. Microsoft could have fixed this by now, and I don't know why they haven't. With every version of Windows, I've always said to just sit back and wait a year, and it should turn out to be a pretty good version of Windows. And you know, aside from Windows 8, that rule has always been true. I mean, even Windows Vista got better after a while. Also, I just want to make this clear right now. I want Windows 11 to succeed. I want it to be a great version of Windows. Because you know, every time I do one of these videos, I think I put out the idea that I'm anti-Microsoft. I'm not. I legitimately want to see Windows get better and continue to dominate the desktop market. I've been a Windows user since Windows 3.1, and aside from Windows 8, which honestly was blasphemy, and we don't talk about that here, I have used every single version of Windows that has been released. So I'm not against Microsoft Windows. I genuinely want to like Windows 11. But here we are, almost two year anniversary of the release of Windows 11, and I still hate it. But I don't hate it for the reasons you might think. You know, because here's the thing, some people hate the UI. And to be perfectly honest with you, I can kind of understand why. Windows 11 doesn't look like a polished version of Windows. It looks like something that was just thrown together because Microsoft needed something to release. It's kind of like one of those coloring contests at your local grocery store. Maybe Microsoft got a bunch of six-year-olds together to draw a picture of what they think Windows should look like. And then they flipped through all the pictures to find something that they think they could work with and that became the new Windows UI. But honestly though, the UI is not why I think Windows 11 sucks. I'm kind of in the minority here that I don't absolutely hate the UI in Windows 11. In fact, there are some aspects of it that I kind of like. No, the reason why I hate Windows 11 is because Microsoft won't leave it alone. They keep doing things that no one's asking for and not fixing the things that we are asking them to fix. You know, sometimes I think it's just some kind of sick joke at Microsoft. Maybe they're just sitting around trolling us or something. Because there are legitimate gripes about the usability of Windows 11, and instead of fixing those, Microsoft's creating more usability issues. So today, I'm gonna go through some of the issues that I'm still having with Windows 11, and I'm gonna talk about some of the new ones that Microsoft has decided to implement to make our lives hard for some reason. But first, we gotta pay some bills, so check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be, because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Okay, so the first gripe I have continues to get worse, and this is the very one that inspired me to make this video in the first place. That's Microsoft's incessant desire to eliminate the control panel. 
I totally get why they want settings to be the default place people go to change settings on their system. I mean, it makes sense, and it's a lot more friendly to touch interfaces. I've heard all the arguments, and they're all valid. But here's the problem. Control Panel has been around for decades. That's literally what we know. And luckily, Microsoft does give us a way to access the Control Panel but they're slowly taking it away piece by piece. It's like playing Adventure's Endgame in slow motion. We're watching the control panels just disintegrate in front of our eyes. You know what? Let's jump on the computer and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is I'm just look at a couple of control panel pages that I typically use on a regular basis. So if I wanted to get to a customer's network properties, typically what I would do is I would right click on their network icon and go to network and internet settings. And of course, you get settings, right? And typically, you'd be able to click somewhere in order to get to the network and sharing center. However, you really can't do that anymore. You click on advanced settings, there's nothing in here that will allow you to get to the original control panel page. However, what you can do, and I've found this out just by clicking random things, is if you click on more network adapter, adapter options, and then you come over here and click on network and internet, then click on network and sharing center, there you go. That's the page that I was looking for in the first place. Now, alternatively, if you jump right into control panel, so if you go into control panel, and then from there, go into network and internet, then you can go to network and sharing center, which is fine, that's great. However, from control panel, if I was to go into hardware and sound and devices and printers, this is a, this is a page that I use a lot when setting up customers' printers. So we click on that, and of course, it jumps into settings. But you know what? I was installing a printer, so let's, let's try this. So I'll click on printers and scanners, and then from here, there should be a place to get into the device page. But unfortunately, there isn't. I've looked everywhere. They even give you this stupid link here to explain why control panel options are moving to settings. Well, you know, the amount of time it took them to write that web page, they could have just not screwed this up in the first place. So what I end up having to do is go back to Bluetooth and devices, click on devices, from there, scroll all the way down until you see more device and printer settings, and there we go. There was the page I was looking for in the first place. So here's the thing. These control panel pages I've been using for years. So when I'm at a customer's house working on their computer, I'm gonna go to the place that I'm most familiar with in order to configure these settings. Now, if Microsoft just eliminated the control panel completely and told us that settings is what we're gonna be doing from now on, then fine, we'll figure it out and we'll get used to it. But that's not what they're doing. Since not all settings are available from within settings, you have to have the control panel in order to configure some elements of the system. But they're systematically taking away pages with each update. And what's worse, is you don't know about it until you go out to a customer's house and realize that you can't find the page that you need in order to configure the thing that you're trying to configure. Windows 11 is apparently a constantly evolving operating system. You know, in software development, eventually a project comes to a point where in development where the features are frozen. This is so developers can concentrate on making everything function the way that it's supposed to without having to worry about adding more features. Typically, the only time features are added at random like this is when a software is in the alpha stage. In fact, even the beta stage typically has features frozen. You know, I'm sure that most people watching this video drive a car. You probably have gotten pretty used to the steering wheel, haven't you? Can you imagine if you woke up one day and had to drive to work, but Ford stopped by the night before and updated your car to a yoke? Chances are there would be a lot of accidents the next day. So, when I'm at a customer's house and I'm working on their system and all of a sudden I can't access a certain control panel page and I have to stumble through settings in order to configure the system, it makes me kind of look like a noob. I'm crashing against guardrails, stumbling through trying to figure out how to do what I've been doing for years in the control panel. My customer is typically sitting right next to me and realizes that this tech they just hired doesn't even know how to configure Windows machine. It makes me look stupid. Here's what Microsoft should be doing. Continue to advance settings and get it to the point of replacing the control panel. 
Go for it. But in the meantime, allow the control panel to function the same way it's always functioned. Stop removing pages and rerouting us to settings. There's absolutely no reason for them to do this other than to frustrate people. Until settings is done, leave the control panel alone. Now, moving along, the next usability problem that I have, and I've had since the very release of Windows 11, is that stupid Windows 11 context menu. And if you've watched my videos for a while, you already knew that. But you know what? Let's jump on the computer, and I'm going to show you exactly why it is that I hate this thing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close a couple of these things up real quick. Let me show you this, all right? So if you right-click anywhere, you get this new context menu. And it's essentially an abbreviated version of the old one. The old one is if you click on Show More Options, this is the context menu you're normally used to. And you know, honestly, when it comes to just click right-clicking on the desktop, this isn't that big of a deal. But where it does become a big deal is, let me go ahead and open up and see if I have some documents on this thing. Okay, so we got notes here. So if I right-click on this, it essentially takes all of the normal tools that you're used to using to manipulate files. Like in this case, it would be cut, copy, you know, paste, things of that nature. And it moves them into these little icons across the top. Well, the problem that I have is, is that half the time, I don't remember what all these icons do. I mean, obviously this is cut and obviously this is delete, but this one is what? Okay, share. All right. So this one here is rename and this one here is copy. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm having to hover my mouse over each icon to figure out what each icon does. So what ends up happening is a lot of times, just out of frustration, you just gotta hit show more options so you can go to what you wanted to do in the first place. But you know what? I get why Microsoft changed the context menu. They wanted it to look more modern. But here's the thing, everyone hates it. I have yet to talk to a single person that says they think the new menu is an improvement over the old one. I mean, come on, maybe someone out there does like it, but I guarantee you that they're in the minority. Microsoft should simply give us the ability to switch back to the old one in settings. I'll give them the opportunity to expand settings even more, you know, since they love it so much more than control panel. Luckily though, there is a registry hack that you can use to get the old context menu back. But unless you know about that registry hack, the only real option that they give you is to go down to the bottom of the context menu and click show more options. I literally find myself doing that every single time I use it, which just adds another click to my workflow. And speaking of too many clicks, what a coincidence. That's the next issue I have. Why exactly does Microsoft think it's an improvement to increase the number of clicks to perform a task that you used to be able to perform with a fraction of the clicks? You know what? Let's jump back on the computer again and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so we already talked about the context menu, having to go here and click more options. That's one more click that you normally would have just gotten the context menu originally. However, there's more than that. Come down here to these control panels. Normally you could click on this to get to your network settings. However, you can't do that anymore. You've got all of these quick settings right here that you can modify. However, if you want to get to network settings, you have to right click and not left click. And then all throughout Windows, like, you know, like we had mentioned before, if we go to network and internet settings, typically we could go right to where we want to go. But now we got to go to advanced settings. We got to go to more network adapter options. We got to go to network and internet, network and sharing center. And now we're in the network and sharing center. And that was how many clicks? I think I counted like five or six for what used to be one, and this happens all over Windows. In fact, you know what? My computer right now doesn't have a Wi-Fi card in it, but if it did, you'd click on here, then you had to click again up here in order to get to the Wi-Fi controls that would normally be the first click that you click on when you click on the network icon. Do you see what I mean? I really think that Windows 11 might be a conspiracy between Microsoft and the healthcare system because of the physical therapy that we're all going to need to treat carpal tunnel. I mean, seriously, whose idea was it to turn a task that normally took one click and make it 37 clicks? I know, I know, I might be exaggerating a bit, but I tend to do that when I have to take a Vicodin after I use a Windows 11 system because of the pain in my forearms. You know what though? The plus side is after using Windows 11 for a couple of months, you start looking more like Popeye and you don't even have to eat spinach. You just click your way to more defined forearms. Moving right along, the next problem that I have with Windows 11 is 
Microsoft accounts. I honestly don't think Microsoft understands the problem this causes for technicians, or if they even care. Because here's the thing, when I'm building a new system or I'm reloading Windows for an older system, I'm not gonna create a Microsoft account for the customer. I'm sorry, but I'm simply not going to do it. Many people have suggested that I should just have a burner account that I can use to set up a new system. But then the problem is that the Windows license will get associated with my burner account. Now, this isn't a big deal when it comes to Windows itself because most Windows systems will automatically activate when you reinstall Windows. So if another technician has to install Windows later on, then it should activate without a problem. But where the problem comes in is with Office because when you set up a system with a Microsoft account, it automatically associates your Office license with the Microsoft account that you're using to set up the system. So if sometime in the future, the customer needs to reinstall Office, his license is associated with my account. Luckily, this problem has an easy solution. There are many ways to bypass the Microsoft account requirements. In fact, I did a whole video on it. Hopefully Microsoft will continue to allow us to have a way to bypass this requirement because if the day ever comes that we can't, this is going to cause a lot of problems. And the next issue that I have, and I think this is an issue that a lot of people share with me, is the stupid hardware requirements for Windows 11. Microsoft has made it to where you practically need a new system to run Windows 11. Windows 10 loses support in less than two years. And I can tell you right now, that only about 10% of my customers have systems that meet the requirements for Windows 11. I honestly don't know what's going to happen when Windows 10 finally loses support. I guess I'm going to be building a lot of new computers. So hooray for my bank account, I guess. But unfortunately, this is not good for the consumer. In fact, it's not good for anyone that uses Windows. Furthermore, some of the hardware that does meet the Windows 11 system requirements can barely run the operating system. So here's the thing, right? Microsoft, listen up. You're telling me that a 7700K doesn't meet the system requirements for Windows 11, but an eighth generation Celeron does? Have you ever tried to use a Windows 11 computer with an eighth generation Celeron? I'd rather get a root canal from a dude in the back of a van. Some people have gaming systems that are just a few years old that don't meet the Windows 11 system requirements, but run it exceptionally well. But at the same time, there are computers right now sitting on the shelf at Walmart that come with Windows 11 that are about as fast as a guy trying to drive to work on a pogo stick. It's just not rational. I'm really hoping that when Windows 10 finally loses support, Microsoft lowers these system requirements because the vast majority of systems that are currently in use today running Windows 10 will run Windows 11 just fine. The system requirements are arbitrary and unnecessary. Now, I know that this video was relatively negative. It was kind of meant to be because I'm kind of irritated with Windows 11. The entire premise for this video came from the very first gripe. I have had multiple times Windows 11 has made me look like a fool in front of a customer. I've been working on computers for over 20 years, but there have been several times that I've been setting up a network or installing a new printer and I feel like someone who has just started using a computer last week. But ultimately, not everything is bad in Windows 11. It has a lot of great features. Features that a lot of people aren't taking advantage of because of all the stuff that's stopping people from upgrading to Windows 11 in the first place. I just know that right now, there's a ton of comments in this video that are gonna be from people saying, you should just switch to Linux. <laughs> I'm not going to bash Linux here, but that's not an answer. It's been almost two years. Windows 11 should be better by now. I made excuses for Microsoft when it first was released. I've even made videos telling people to just hang out for a little while. It'll get better. But hey, that grace period is over. This stuff should be fixed by now. There's no excuse anymore. I genuinely want to recommend people that it's time to upgrade to Windows 11. I really do. I just can't. On my new systems, I'm still installing Windows 10 because quite honestly, I don't wanna put my customers through the same frustration that I have to deal with on Windows 11. But the day is coming when we're going to have no other choice than to move to Windows 11. That day 
is less than two years away. I'd like to say that by that time, Windows 11 should be good, but I don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But in the meantime, at least I can give you a way to avoid a couple of my issues. Go ahead and click here for a video that shows you how to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, and then go ahead and click here if you'd like to bypass the Microsoft account requirements. As always, you guys have a great day.